Hello everyone, uh, this video is going to delve into wave speed in a little bit more detail. Um, I'm roughly covering chapter 16, sections 3 to 5. Um, if, you, if you're reading the textbook, uh, I, I would suggest read all of section 3. Section 4 you can skip. Um, the, the only parts really that we'll need, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover in this video, it's, this, it, it's things that were mentioned earlier on in the chapter. They just get into a little bit more detail in the math behind where those formula come from. Uh, but I would suggest reading 16.5. It's not very long, and uh, we're going to need everything in that section. Um, OK, so so this video we're going to do. Um, so first of all, I'm, I'm going to talk about two facts that are just sort of they're mentioned throughout, like sections 1 through 3. But uh, I need to tie it all together right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll go over those two facts, and then we'll talk about three different wave speeds. Um, so we talked to, in the last video, we talked about the three main types of um, waves that we're going to focus on. Waves on st uh, strings, um, longitudinal sound waves, and e &M waves. So we'll talk about formulas for wave speed for each of those three, um, three types of waves. Uh, the example that I want to be able to answer, that we're going to answer sometime in going over all this, is... Um, I have a rope uh, that all of a sudden gets thicker. So imagine we just, you could think of this as just tying together two ropes of different um, linear mass densities. So this thing mu, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but this thing mu is mass per unit volume. I'm sorry, not mass per unit volume, mass per unit length of the string. Um, so it would have SI units of kilograms per meter. Um, so if the string, like floss, would have something like uh, point one gram grams per meter. So if you took one meter of floss, it would have a mass of 0.1 gram, or SI units of you know, 0 0.0001 kilograms. Um, okay, so 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 the question we would want to ask is: so, so suppose you, someone was flicking the rope uh, just up and down for for a few psych, a few uh, pulses, and it looks sinusoidal, so that we can define a frequency and a wavelength. Um, but there is like a beginning and an end, so we can track, you know, when this goes in, uh, into the, the new medium. We want to be able to answer what happens to the speed of this wave, v, uh, the wavelength, which is the distance from one of these to the other, and then the frequency, which you can think of as, um, you know, if, if I just put my hand right here and I tracked how long, uh, so I just counted in one second how many wave crests uh, right here pass by, um, how many wave crests pass by per second? That will be, that will be the frequency, right? the natural frequency. So I want to compare what this, this wave is going to look like in the second region to the first region. OK, so uh, before getting into that, so, so we have two facts here uh, is the first thing to do. Um, so the first thing, uh, and th this fact is sort of lost in all this. The, the, the book doesn't Clearly, the book does say what I'm going to say, but it, it, it's a little hard to, to see where, where they say it. Um, it's, it's probably somewhere in this first, first section. Um, so uh, I want you to think about having a jump rope. So, so a wave on a string, you have a jump rope. Uh, and so the person is just flicking a... Uh, a rope up and down like this, creating a wave. And then they start to flick it up and down faster. OK, so say this is tied to a wall. That's supposed to be my wall right here. So it's tied to the wall. The person's pulling on it. There's some tension in the rope. The person's flicking the, the rope up and down. Uh, and then they start flicking faster. So what happens to the wave? So you have, this is the uh, one important formula we're going to focus on a lot in this, this video. Um, so the frequency is going to increase, right? If you if you're going up and down more times per second, then that frequency definitely gets bigger. Um, so this equation is still going to be true. So if the frequency goes up, then either the wavelength has to go down or the speed of the wave has to go up. Um, so to ruin the surprise, you know, this is just facts, not to. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll delve more more into. Um, what happens with wave speed. But, but to, to sum up what happens, this is going to go down. Okay, If you increase, if you change the frequency at all, it's the wavelength that compensates, and then this would be constant. 
So it's not the it's not that all waves on strings have the same exact velocity. We're going to have an equation for the for the velocity, but the this equation is going to depend on so v depends. This is the crucial fact here. V depends on material properties. And for strings, those material properties are going to be the tension, T, and the linear mass density, um, linear mass density, mu. So the, the, the velocity will depend on the, the material properties and not on uh, the property properties of the source producing the wave. So in other words, you, you can't change the wave speed by changing the frequency, right? You're the source of the wave. You're changing the frequency. That's That doesn't control the wave speed. The wave speed depends on the, in this case, the medium that, that is traveling through, right, for, for a matter of wave. So if you increase the frequency, you're going to decrease the wavelength. If we're able to visualize this wave and someone flicks it up and down faster, these waves are going to get closer together. Right, the wave the wavelength if the wavelength goes down, then these things get closer, closer and closer together. All right, that's the first fact. The second fact, I want to get out of the way right away. So the, after we do these two facts, I'll, I'll go a little bit more in more in detail as to what this this formula is relating v tension and mu. Right. So the second fact is, and I'll just say it: when a wave passes from one medium to another. And so the wave speed could change, right? If it depends on the material properties and we're changing the material, then the, the, the wave speed could definitely change. When a wave passes from one medium to another, so if the wave speed can change, you might think, well, that you know, this is impossible to keep track of. If the wave speed can change and the maybe the wavelength and the frequency could change too, how are we going to get a handle on things? Um, it turns out that the frequency is going to be constant. The frequency of the wave doesn't change. Um, so one way to think of, of this is, um, so imagine I had a wall right here. It's made of um, thick, gooey substance. <laughs> maybe by me saying that, I shouldn't use a wall. But maybe <laughs> let's imagine water right here instead. This is air. Uh, let's suppose someone is firing bullets. And they're spread out by some amount, right? This is the wavelength. So the bullets are sort of symbolizing like the, the wave crests. You know, they happen at a certain frequency. And the, the distance between the bullets would symbolize the, um, the, the wavelength. Now, bullets don't travel as quickly in uh, water as they do in air. And so these, th these are going to start to bunch up, right? They're, they're, they move a lot faster here than they do here. Uh, they're going to start to bunch up. Um, but the, the key thing is here, so you have, imagine you had a friend, um, imagine you had two friends, uh, and they're able to just count how many bullets per second are passing through each of these points. Um, the key thing here is that there are no bullets that, that accumulate at the interface right there. So the frequency, the rate at which the bullets are passing through here, is equal to the frequency right here, the rate at which the bullets are passing through here. So I think this helps visualize what's going on with with the wave crests. You know, they, because they're not they're not bunching up because they they're, they just pass on through. Um, the frequency doesn't change. So even so, the wave speed can change, and therefore the the wavelength will have to change. You know, just by this formula, v equals lambda f, uh, but the f won't change. Okay, good. Uh, all right, so two facts and three wave speeds for the three different kinds of. Um, Waves. So at this point, so to connect this back with the book, so, so those two facts were in the first three sections. 16.4 uh, goes into the math of waves. Um, I don't, so, so ideally we would have more time in this class and we would talk about the, uh, the wave equation in a little bit more detail. Um, so waves have um, 
a particular mathematical property. Um, here we go, the general wave equation. So any function, so that this capital D right here, remember was displacement and it's a function of X and T. So any function that satisfies that equation is considered a wave. Um, so the, the, there are more complicated waves than, than just these sinusoidal ones that we're talking about. We'll, we'll be talking about very particular examples. Um, but there are also, you know, to, to analyze wave pulses, um, you can talk in more generality about waves that, that don't look exactly like uh, sines and cosines, but they do satisfy this. So this is more so a statement, that, uh, like a math statement, that the function retains its shape, it's just moving in position. Um, so you can show that this, is, this equation is equivalent to that, but that's getting a little into, you know, just too much math and not, not uh, physics phenomena that we want to go over in this class. So, so we're uh, basically going to ignore this section. Um, but in the section, it is derived what the formula is for wave speed um, for waves on strings. And that part I want to keep. Uh, so three wave speeds. So the first one we're going to do is waves on strings. Uh, so the formula here is going to be V equals square root of tension divided by linear mass density. That's the equation for the, so if you want to know exactly how fast, so you're flicking on a, a jump rope like this, how fast are those, are these wave pulses actually going to travel? Well, it's determined by the tension in the string and the linear mass density. So remember tension is in Newtons. Um, so just to remind everybody, this is in Newtons, SI units, and this is in kilograms per meter. So you, again, you want to make sure that you have SI units for both these quantities uh, so that you get a meters per second out for, for um, velocity. Uh, so this is a common mistake students make because a lot of um, a lot of ropes and cords are, you know, it's it's given in grams per meter, not grams per meter and not kilograms per meter, um, just because they're so light. All right, so I think we're, we're prepared to answer this question. Uh, so for, before we go on to wave speed for sound waves and um, and E and M waves, we can, we can do this one. Okay, so so let's go back to this example. Um, so you might want to pause and, and see if you can see if you can work through this now. What happens to V lambda and F when the wave passes through the rope too? Um, so we can find what happens to the wave speed by looking at mu. So let me go back to the example here. Oh, very good. Um, example from beginning. Uh, mu two is greater than mu one. Right, the the linear mass density was bigger. Uh, the rope weighed more per per meter, uh, and therefore, so see how the mu is on the denominator here. So bigger mu means a smaller wave speed. So V2 is less than V1. So V2 is less than V1. The frequencies are the same because of this fact too. Right? When a wave passes from one medium to another, the frequency of the wave doesn't change. So when the wave passes through, so also, we know F1 is equal to F2. When a wave passes from one medium to another, the frequency doesn't change. And it's still true that the wave speed is equal to lambda f. Right, so this is true when the when the wave is in rope one, and also true when it's e in rope two. They might be different v's, they might be different lambdas, but it's, but this equation is still satisfied. So if v, so from one to two, from rope one to rope two, the velocity goes down. So v two is less than v one. Uh, the f is constant. And so you can see what happens to the uh, wavelength, lambda, right? If V goes down and it's equal to some, a constant times something, that's something that lambda had better go down as well. So it looks like lambda decreases. So we can fill in this picture. When this, by the time this wave pulse gets here, the lambda is going to go down and the wave speed goes down. So, it's, so these bunch up a little bit more. Um, See three peaks right there, and they're bunched up. So this is what the wave pulse is going to look like when it gets there, and it's going to be moving slower. Let's say bunch up, it's moving slower, still traveling to the right. 
All right, good. Um, next, so at this point we are in section 16.5 um, to do sound and light. Okay, so for sound waves, so sound waves all have actually a, a similar formula. Um, your book doesn't talk about this quite yet. Uh, it saves it for later. Um, for sound waves, you, so you don't have to know this formula. I just want to kind of compare it to this. So V is, for, for waves on strings, V was squared attention over linear mass density. So, so the tensions, um, like the tug on the string. So I, we, we have to think about what the analog for sound would be. What's the tug in air? Um, so I'll, I'll mention what that is in just a second. And then mu is kind of how, how hard it is for um, matter to, you know, this is a, a measure of inertia. Um, mass per unit length. So for sound, perhaps that, that part's not too surprising that the denominator is going to be replaced with density. Um, this thing on the numerator is called bulk modulus. And this is basically a measure of how incompressible uh, your fluid is. Um, bulk modulus. Um, so the, the bigger the number, the harder it is to say to change the volume of that stuff. So water is very incompressible. It has a huge, huge, huge bulk modulus. Um, air has a, a, a relatively small bulk modulus compared to water. So if you look at water compared to, uh, well, 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 we'll compare water and air uh, using this formula in, uh, a little bit later, but. Uh, basically, you, you don't because I, we don't we don't want to really work with this quantity bulk modulus. Your book doesn't use it. Um, we could just plug in so V for air. So this is sound waves in any fluid. For sound waves in air, if you plug in the bulk modulus for air and the density of air, remember that was one point two kilograms per um, cubic meter. Uh, v air is roughly three hundred forty three meters per second at room temperature. Room at room temperature. Your book gives an equation for the temperature dependence. Uh, so notice how um, if I plug in T equals zero in this formula, so zero degrees C, I get something a little smaller, right? 331 meters per second. Um, maybe it's because we live in San Diego that I'm not really too worried about different temperatures and I can just always say we're at room temperature. Um, so really, you can get away with just knowing this. So unless you're told otherwise in the problem to use another number, just use 343 meters per second. So you don't even need to know this formula. Um, unless a problem is very, so if you're looking at a problem at the end of the chapter and they say, you know, you're at zero degrees C, then use this formula just for that problem. But if you're not told anything about the temperature, just use this value for the um, speed of sound waves in air. Um, so one reason I wanted to go over this this formula was I wanted to mention that you might know the fact that um, sound waves in water travel faster than in air. It's it's more like a thousand meters per second in water. Uh, so the you you might think that the, the, because of the main difference between water and air is that water is more dense that the, it's due to that fact, uh, but it's not right. If if I look at if I look at the denominator right here. So instead of row for air, if I row, plug in a bigger row, uh, right? If I if I increase this by a factor of a thousand, because it's on the denominator, V should go down. So the fact that water is more dense means that the sound waves should be less. It's actually this part that uh, increases the the um, speed of sound waves in water. It's the bulk modulus of water is so so much bigger than the bulk modulus for air that this factor actually wins out over this factor. So in other words, it's because water is so incompressible uh, that, that the um, speed of sound in water is bigger than the speed of sound in air. It's not because of its density. It's because of the fact that it's incompressible. So I thought that was a neat fact um, that your book doesn't go in you. Uh, okay, one more. e &M waves. So the wave speed of e &M waves. Uh, you... I'm sure you already know the answer to this. So in vacuum, 
you have probably seen this. So uh, when we talk about ENM waves, we tend to replace V with the letter C. Uh, so you write V ENM waves. Uh, let me put back is equal to C. So just define this this constant. Um, and this is three times ten to the eight meters per second. Huge, a huge, huge, huge number. Um, so this this number it, it means it takes like uh, ten milliseconds or something to go a thousand miles, or you know, it, it's basically instantaneous. Um, if you ever look at lightning and then hear the thunder later, uh, you can basically take that this is instantaneous. Right? You, you see the light like a few microseconds after it flashes. So that's basically right away. But the sound takes a long time to get to you. So it looks like for every three seconds, it's about one kilometer away. Um, right? You see the, the flash, and then this is how long, how long it takes for the thunder to reach your ears. OK, so that's in vacuum. Um, but in material, so like if you shine light in water, if you shine laser light through water, it doesn't travel quite this fast. And we can classify materials by how fast light travels in them. So in materials, the velocity of these ENM waves is reduced by some factor depending on the medium. And we call that factor the index of refraction. Index of refraction. And that's exactly what this table is right here. Typical indices of refraction. So vacuum is where n equals 1. Right? That's the, the biggest speed of light that you can get. Uh, error is very, very close to 1. So if, if you have a problem in error, unless you're really focusing on the difference between that and vacuum, you can just take that value to be 1. Um, water, though, this, this starts to become a, a measurable, um, well, even more measurable difference. Right? The, the speed of light in, in water is 3 fourths the value in air. Um, and then other they give a couple other values as well, but we're, we're really going to use these more so in optics uh, towards the end of the course. Uh, for now, you just need to know these two formula right here. Um, yeah, the frequencies are very, very big. So the colors depend on the frequency uh, and the wavelength of the light. Uh, so there's a few facts about that that you've probably seen before in high school. Um, and yeah, that takes us to the end of, of this section.